Hey guys, welcome back to Project Synchro. Today, we're gonna do a little brief explanation of the viscous coupled center differential. Uh, you guys probably know it as just a viscous coupler, but this is used in uh, quite a few road car all wheel drive systems. It's not super common in trucks. Trucks you use like a transfer case where the center differential of sorts actually locks, but in pretty much uh, all common road cars that are all-wheel drive nowadays the center differential is going to be a viscous couple viscous coupled unit like so uh, Volkswagen was uh, one of the first again if you remember Audi or the let's see the let me get this wrong Jensen interceptor Jensen interceptor was the first all-wheel drive although I think it was technically a four-wheel drive road car then you know the Audi Quattro, of course, which had a vacuum locking center differential, not a viscous coupled center differential. Then Volkswagen started development on the Synchro drivetrain, which is obviously, uh, bear the name of the channel and the project and all that stuff, this is, uh, this is that. So um, I, I'm not sure if it started with the drivetrain that I'm using, but I'm pretty sure the very first viscous couplers that they used were the ones that went in the Synchro Vanagons, which are very close, but a slightly smaller center differential than the one I have here that is meant for the Passat G60 Synchro and the Rally Golf. It's actually pretty good just because it's a, a slightly larger unit. You get kind of a better lockup profile out of it. And uh, it's one I want to have for racing, but uh, just as a brief explanation, for those of you who uh, are familiar with how a regular differential works. You get one input off of a ring gear and you actually drive two outputs. Now, whether or not you have a set of uh, uh, spur gears or, or you know, the, the uh, uh, spider gears inside the differential that drive the two outputs or you have clutch plates or anything like that, any common, uh, you know, if you think of like a pumpkin differential, you're going to have one input and two outputs. A different thing about this viscous coupler is that you have one input coming in the front here. This is actually the case itself is the input with this little pilot shaft coming off the front. And then you have one output, which is the splined shaft down the center uh, that drives the rear differential. So cool part about that is you send power in, magic happens internally, you send power out. So the magic of that is if you think uh, again, back to common automotive technology, the torque converter in an automatic transmission is very similar to this. If you think of a, uh, I almost called it an Astro Glide, but it's, a, it's a, the Hydro, Hydromatic? Yeah, the Hydromatic. I don't think I'm gonna screw that up. Old GM automatic uh, uh, torque converter, or really any common torque converter. It's really just a, a plate suspended in some hydraulic fluid of some sort. So in this case, it's actually a silicone fluid and these plates are suspended, uh, uh, you know, in this fluid, There's, they sit very close to each other in, the, in an arrangement where every even plate is connected to, let's see, this would be that, every even plate is connected to the input and then every odd plate that sits in between those even plates is connected to the output. So these plates all sit in close to each other. They are not mechanically connected in any way. I can't stress that enough. These plates don't actually touch each other, but they are suspended with very fine layers of the silicone fluid. And uh, as you turn all the input plates, that silicone fluid is so viscous, it's, it's like a honey of sorts. They're gonna wanna drag the output plates along with them. And the profile in which they drag them is, is that they do not immediately begin applying power through the system until you, uh, uh, you ramp up the difference in speed between the front and rear wheels. In the synchro drivetrain, I don't think it's like, it has to be like a 5% difference between the front and rear wheel speeds before you really start stressing the silicone in here getting it hot and you start to uh, actually get some torque through, through the differential itself. So um, 
The cool thing about this is that the center differential is a closed system. And since all the stuff is in a closed system, it behaves based on the ideal gas law. And if you remember chemistry at all, ideal gas law, something, uh, if you think of like a tea kettle on, uh, on a stove, you've got some water in there, you apply a bunch of heat, you've got it closed except for that little whistle. And when it gets hot enough, it starts, starts creating steam. There's a lot of pressure that builds up in there and it blows that little whistle. So um, just, just one basic application. It's kind of the same thing uh, to a different degree that happens inside this unit which is you have a, a unit that is about 86% full of this silicone fluid, this honey-like uh, non-Newtonian fluid that kind of behaves, if you think of like corn, starch, and water, uh, a setup like that, I'll let you go uh, check that out. Any, any little kid experiment or something like that, you've probably seen that before. So it behaves like a non-Newtonian fluid. It's extremely viscous, and as it gets hot, that 86% full actually grows based on the ideal gas law, and it grows and it consumes that little pocket of air that's left, and the, the entire system is then pressurized with that silicone fluid, and it allows uh, more power to be applied uh, to the output to the rear wheels eventually. So that means that um, the more you slip, the, the uh, more power is applied to the rear wheels in, in layman's terms. So there's a, you don't have to know all the super specifics about it. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, there's a really cool paper out here that we'll post a link to. It's a SAE technical paper, a viscous coupling and the drivetrain of an all wheel drive vehicle. And it's a cool little read. I mean, it's, it is scientific in nature and it's a little bit dry at times, but uh, this was written by a Volkswagen test engineer that uh, was doing development on the synchro drivetrain itself. So while Volkswagen uh, were, were doing work on getting the system ready to go into production, they wrote up all the figures and they put them in a cool SAE paper. So I use this paper very heavily when I figured out just how full to fill the unit. When I said 86%, I wasn't just making up a number. Well, I was kind of making up a number. Maybe I'm a little bit off, but you know, I have the, uh, I know the exact amount of silicone fluid that needs to go up in here for the, the uh, profile I want it to lock up, and I know exactly what viscosity silicone fluid I want to use based on the uh, profile of the torque. So it's not, it's not a dumb system by any means, and if you think of different viscous couplers, they're all probably filled slightly different ways because you know some of them come in Jeeps, and some of them are in Subarus, and all these companies are going to want to make them slightly differently, and just because they're all sealed units, doesn't make them all the same. So there's a lot of engineering work and there's probably a lot of test engineering work because you need to actually see how it's gonna perform on the road before you can call a center differential or viscous coupler complete. So um, we're gonna do another episode after this. So stay tuned for that. And, and uh, I'm gonna go through the process of how Kendall and I sort of reverse engineered this unit. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna tear into it we're gonna get these plates put back in and we're gonna fill uh, the unit up with silicone and hopefully uh, in future episodes, get it installed in the car. So I hope you like that little brief explanation of how a viscous coupled center differential works, especially as it pertains to the Synchro unit itself. And stay tuned to Project Synchro for uh, more videos here in the future. Thanks for watching guys, see you later. Sorry guys, if you're watching live, Kyle is hooking up the... Uh... Shit takes time! Yeah, it does.